Hello, everyone. We have another fun Facebook Live today. And it is exciting because I'm going to be um, explaining how I develop some of the three-dimensional flowers that I make. And some people might think you need to have an embroidery machine to do that, but you really don't. It's, it's something that really just takes a lot of fun and creativity, and it opens up new doors when you start thinking about how you can make three-dimensional flowers and butterflies and all kinds of other things just using our sewing machine. So I'm going to start um, this first half of the Facebook Live. We're going to go through some sewing techniques, things you can do in sewing that will allow you to make three-dimensional flowers and butterflies, and then some other things that you can do to move into embroidery. And then we'll talk a little bit about the ribbon embroidery attachment. Now, this whole thing started with my last project, which I made, which has a lot of these three-dimensional flowers to it. And it's actually not finished at this point. There are more designs that I'm adding to it. For example, here I have this little daisy that I just tucked up in there. And even though I've got the back quilted and I've got the major part of the project done because it's all quilted and most of the flowers are in there, I'm changing my mind as I go and adding new, new flowers. Maybe I decide that as I'm having it hang up uh, that maybe I just don't like a certain flower. Well, it, in many years ago, what I would have just done is just left it and said, okay, it's good enough. But really... I get so much more fun by allowing myself to play. So right now, this purple flower that's in the middle, I don't like it all. So I know I'm going to be putting something over it. And because of the way that I, I work and kind of develop things um, dimensionally, I can easily come in afterwards and do that. So I'm going to put this aside for now. And uh, this morning, well, not even this morning, just actually about half an hour ago, I decided I'm going to build some designs. Now, these ones were done with the ribbon embroidery attachment. And I've got one of them on my shirt up over here. So that's that's one way of embroidering and getting three-dimensional petals. But there's a lot of things you can do with our sewing stitches. And here's a couple of other uh, designs. Now, this one was done with a very wide ribbon. And the uh, these flowers here were done with our pop-up stitches. And then this was just done with a narrow ribbon. And it's really all about how you fold it and how you pull it together. So I'm going to show you on the machine. And today I'm stitching on the creative, uh, sorry, the um, the designer Epic 2. And I'm, uh, but you can do this on any machine, really. Uh, whether you have a, a basic sewing machine like an opal or an emerald, most of the sewing techniques I'm going to show you, you can do with any machine. So to start with, let's just talk about what happens when you take a ribbon. Now, this is an inch and a half ribbon. You can use two inch ribbon. My preference is to use ribbon that's got a satin on both sides and you can buy them when you buy the ribbon. Make sure when you're looking for it that you find ribbon that says that it's satin on both sides. This one is not. And so the back side's a little duller and really all it does is it gives you a different look anyways. So on a basic level, if all I was to do was to run a straight stitch down the center of this. Now, what I usually do is I will turn off the fixed stitch. So I, I don't want it to lock or go backwards in the beginning. And I don't want it to do that at the end because I want to adjust the thread. I'm using a thread, <coughs> excuse me. I'm using a thread that's a stronger sewing thread. I'm not using a decorative thread. And now all I'm going to do, because I made the stitch length about 4.5, you can see as I gather it up what effect that it can have. And that's just on a wider ribbon. This is just one easy way of doing it. And it kind of just gathers and makes all these beautiful little tucks and curls and things like that. And you can separate them out so that the ribbon doesn't fold on itself. And you may decide that you don't want it to be that tight. And so because we don't have that lock on either end, we can move them out and adjust the ruffles so that they're going to look the way we want them to look. Now, another way of doing this, and I'll, I'll show you the different effects. You can see kind of pretty simple that one, right? Now, another effect that I have is when I do this, and I've marked this with a black line 
to show you what I'm doing. So I'm going to sew the decorative stitch or the straight stitch down and then over. And I'm just coming back at a 45 degree angle. And the angle actually doesn't matter that much. It's really more about the fact that when you do this, what will happen is you're going to sew down here. And then when you sew back up here, this will create a little tuck because this is going to be all pulled in. And this is going to give you a nice petal shape. Now, the next petal will be on the other side. So here, when you're looking at this one right here, it looks like there's one petal below and then a petal above, one petal above that, and they're offset. So by stitching like this, it gives you a very offset look to it. So I'm going to go to my machine and um, I'm going to show you what that looks like. And then I'll show you a couple of other possibilities too. Now, all of this original thought came from back when I got excited about doing uh, three-dimensional quilts, and I would make three-dimensional leaves and flowers and stuff. And then when I got into embroidery, I would start to do some of the pop-up designs. And so the pop-up designs have a lot of things like leaves and stuff like that, and there's a felted one, that are meant to be three-dimensional. And so that got my juices going about how many different ways we can do three-dimensional flowers. So I've got lots of great ideas and samples to show you. And right now, all I'm going to do is go over to my Epic 2. And I'm going to show you about setting up my set stitch. All right. Now, on my sewing machine, I'm going to lengthen my stitch length. Usually, I like it about 4.5. You can go to five, but sometimes that's a little too long. The other thing I want to do is I want to lower my tension because I don't want the tension to be stiff. Like if I was sewing a garment together, I would want there to be a lot of tension so that it would um, hold the garment together. But in this place, I'm trying to gather. So by lowering my deluxe stitch system or my tension, then that way I'm going to get a much looser stitch and it'll be easier to pull. I have a Gooderman thread, sewing thread in the top, and I have Gooderman sewing thread in the bottom. So that's the only thing that I'm doing right here. Now, the next step, I'm going to change and I'm going to go to my foot so you can see what I'm doing. Now, because I'm sewing on the Designer Epic 2, as I start sewing, I'm going to turn my laser on. Because that's really going to help me. Do you see the laser there, that red line? All right. So what I'm going to do when I start sewing is I'm just going to come down and I will be able to use that to kind of keep the angle at a 45 degree angle. I'm checking to make sure on my button on the front of my machine, I don't want the fixed stitch on. So if I do have it set, I can always deselect it from there. And so it won't tie off when I start sewing. And so all I'm going to do is start sewing. And when I come to the end, I want my needle to be either right off the fabric or at the very edge of that fabric. And now I'm turning. I've got my uh, laser set so the way that I'm going. So I know I'm coming right to the other side and I'm going to sew. And so really all I'm doing it right now, I have the lines to follow, but now I won't have the lines to follow. So what I'm going to do, I'm setting my machine to the needle in the down position. And now all I can do is I can look as I'm going. This line of stitching is on the line of the stitch plate. I'm watching to make sure that it's there at a right angle. And now I know I've got that same 45 degree angle. Now as I turn the other way, I'll see the stitching line right here, and I can use the line that's in my plate that's right going across there. So as long as I'm following that, I know that I've got my machine set for a 45 degree angle. It's not a nice little technique to do. And when I'm done, now if I decided I wanted to change that angle and make it steeper, because I wanted the petals to be farther apart and more, more ribbon gathered, then I can change the angle and make it wider. So this time I don't have the, um, the stitching line over here on that guard. I'm pointing toward the back 
of my stitch plate. And then I'll show you what happens when you gather it. And when you're done, you just lift it up. You don't want to cut the tail short. You want to have a long, so I just lifted the foot up and pulled it to the side. And then I'll come over to the main camera to show you. Okay, so there is my gather. The trick to this is to know that you're gathering the same thread on either end. So I want I usually gather the top thread. All right, and all I'm doing is pulling the thread as I go. All right, and you can pull and pull, and then on the other end you can do the same thing. All right, just make sure you're gathering the same thing. If you if you choose to gather the bottom thread then just make sure you're always gathering the, the bottom thread and just kind of ease it on a little bit. You don't want to go too much at once. And then I'll show you what it'll look like in a second, okay? So, and I do have another one over here that's been gathered like this. Now, if you don't want to take the trouble of making that 45 degree turn, I've got a really great idea for you and it worked out pretty good. So I'll show you that next. So you can see how it's going, right? So what we have here, is we've got one pedal and then on the other side, we have another pedal and it's just going opposite of each other. So it just gives you kind of a look like you would have in nature where you would have a, a flower here, a flower here, and they'd be offset a little bit. And that's a very easy way to do that. Now on a very wide ribbon, you're getting a much, much wider design. If you were using a smaller design, then you, know, you can see how big that looks, right? Now, I could have stacked another layer underneath it. I could have taken a smaller ribbon and put it down the center of that to really give it a look that would be even more three-dimensional than what I've got here. Now, the only difference that I did for this one, which was, it was really much, much simpler, was instead of choosing a straight stitch, I chose a wavy line because we've got all these great stitches, right? So the wavy line is something that, I think uh, many of you know, well, let's go over here first. All right. So if you go to the D menu and you choose a stitch like this, that kind of does the same thing as, and I'll, I'll stitch this out so you can kind of see the difference. Okay. So I can make that wavy line. Now it does say I should put my B foot on. So I'm going to get a message to disengage my walking, my uh, dual feed foot. So I can make this longer. And then all that's going to happen is, and I'll turn the laser off for this. All right. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit here. Is now the my uh, machine is going to sew back and forth in a wavy line. And we have bigger wavy lines too that are all different kinds of wavy lines. So we can check and see the way it looks. So it's going to go to the right and then the left. And I can kind of weave in and out a little bit. And I'll stop there. So that will give me the same, and I don't know if you can see it all that well in the light, that will give me the same kind of effect as... I will have one flower petal here and then another flower petal will be on the opposite. Now, if you're looking for more extreme petals, there's another way that you can do it. With this flower, you can see I drew it with a black marker so you could see what it would look like. I'm starting on one side with a straight stitch and I'm going back to my straight stitch. And now I'm going to sew Oh, and I didn't make my stitch length longer. So let me make my stitch length longer. And I'm going to drop my tension. Remember, anytime I want to gather like this, that's what I'm going to do. And so now I turn, I'm going to sew up to the other side and then come back down. And now I'm sewing on that edge again. And this is really beautiful. I, I think this is one of my favorite techniques because what you're getting is you're getting one petal that's individual, another petal that's individual. 
And so each of those petals stands on their own. And depending upon how far apart your little V that you're stitching, that will decide how big your petal will be. So if you wanted to start in the beginning of a flower and then wrap it, you could kind of see that there would be one petal, there's another petal, and then as I'm going, I've got all of these beautiful petals. I can control how big they are by how much I gather them. But it's very, very easy to do. So let me just check and see if anybody has any questions before I go too far. Okay. So you can see that the idea of just doing that little shape is happening. It's very, very easy because if you wanted to make that, this is kind of similar to where I just went and did the 45 degrees. But if you think about that little V that's there, if you want to make it a little sharper, it will pull in that petal a little bit sharper. So you get a more tucked in petal. And depending upon how you sew them, I mean, when I buy ribbon, I tried to buy a big spool that's got lots of yardage on it. So I can afford to spend a little time playing with the effects of this. This kind of thing where you've got these petals that are very, very well defined and well shaped, you can form just about any idea of a flower that you've got. So what I like to do is I'm going to, if I think, okay, I want to make a delphimian. I will Google what a delphimian. I have an idea what it looks like, but I am not a good artist. I cannot envision in my head. So I'll Google a flower. If I want to do a daylily, if I want to do something where, you know, it's a daisy and I'm not really sure what a daisy looks like, I looking at a picture of it makes it easier for me to figure out what I want those petals to look like. Oh, um, somebody asked a question about how did I come up with the shape of the 45 degrees? Well, it started with, I was trying to make petals and trying to figure out how I could get the petals to be offset from each other. So uh, I tried it with a narrower ribbon and it didn't work very much, but doing it with a, a wide ribbon like that at the 45 degrees, it just, it worked out. And every single time you change that line to something different, even if you just do a straight line down the center, right? And then you gather it up. It, the results are beautiful. It's just a matter of what are you going to do with it when you're done, right? So if you think of this, imagine that this is a hydrangea. And a hydrangea has all these small little flowers that make this big ball of flower, right? So by just doing that straight stitch through the center of the ribbon, and then as you gather them up, you're going to kind of just roll them up into a ball that gives you that essence. It feels like there's all these little flower petals in there, but really they're nothing more complicated than just sewing a straight stitch down the edge here. Now, there's a lot of different ways of doing what I'm doing. There's not one right or one wrong way. And most of it, I just made up by playing. And I think that's the most important thing is you've got to just let yourself play because the more you play, the more ideas you have. I guarantee you, by the time you get off today's Facebook Live, you will have a lot more ideas than I have even given you. Now, we all know we can make three-dimensional things. We can use silk flowers, right? Some of the petals from silk flowers are really fun to use to make three-dimensional flowers. I always find they're a little bit one-dimensional to me, and I, they don't always have the shine that I'm looking for. So I, I came up with this other way of doing it. I took some of the ribbon that was um satin ribbon <laughs> uh, and uh somebody commented about it, it feels like a math formula to come up with these shapes it is all about experimenting it really is so all i did for this next technique and this is is really super easy too all right is i took a shape of ribbon now the problem with satin ribbon is that the the threads, the fibers that are on there, they ravel and then it doesn't look very nice. So um, I did see this. Somebody did it on a YouTube somewhere. They were talking about a way to finish the edges off so that they wouldn't ravel on you would be to uh, heat them with, a, you know, like um, a barbecue um, barbecue lighter or a you know, cigarette lighter. Who has a cigarette lighter? Um, I don't have a cigarette lighter. So um, 
I usually use my barbecue one, but I was having trouble figuring how I could be on video doing that. And so I'm using it a different technique. I'm using a candle here. But all you do to this is heat it. And what happens is you heat it, it crinkles the ribbon. And so now you have all these other really great shapes that you can make into flowers. And uh, I cut them about basically just like a square or a rectangle, something about like this size from here to here. And then every single one of them looks a little different. You can certainly make them smaller, but I love the fact that, think of how beautiful that could be. You've got satin ribbon, so you've got the shine, you've got finished edges on them. And now if you really wanted to add a lot of extra um, oomph to it, you could always take some fabric markers and color them in so there was maybe a little bit more shading in the center of the flower than at the top. And so a lot of those techniques that I use for coloring in my fabric work for this kind of thing too. All right. Now, so now that I've done it with the silk ribbons and I've got lots of these flowers, I'll show you how to put them together too. You can also do the same thing with some of the other fibers that I like to work with. Now, this is an organza. It shreds like crazy. It will just, it'll, it'll totally... You know, if you washed it, it would just destroy it because all the threads would come off and it wouldn't be able to do it. Well, that technique that I was doing with the satin ribbons works very well for the sheer fabrics too. So all I have to do is take this edge. Let me see if I pull it. I know where I'll do it. I'll do it over here near my machine because I think you'll get a better view with this. Let me see if I can get it down here like that. Okay. And so all I'm doing, and you can see it pretty easily, is when I put this near the heat, it crinkles up. All right. And then I just turn it around. It does not burn, but you can see how quickly it, it works, right? So you don't want to have your fingers anywhere near there. But that's a quick, easy way of being able to make your, your petals. And... Um, Somebody asked, do they have classes like this for beginners? This is a beginner's class, Darlene. There is nothing more beginner than this. All I'm doing is taking pieces of satin ribbon and making shapes out of them. And then I'm going to show you how to put them together to make a flower. There's no skill. And really, everything that I've done so far, I've used a straight stitch for. So the um, a lot of the, the techniques, like when you're looking here, at the, the flowers that are here and these three-dimensional ones here. I did use the pop-up stitches that are on our uh, many of our Husqvarna biking machines. But you see this little yellow flower? All I did with that was take some ribbon, I lengthened the stitch, and I, length and I um, lowered the tension, and then sewed down the middle. And when it gathered all of the ribbon up, then all I did was put it down and I stitched the beginning part of it and I just twirled it around and, and added a couple of stitches to hold it in place. So there's, there really is, this is not anything where you need any skill for. A very beginner person can use these techniques. So I hope that you uh, give it a try because it really is kind of fun to see what you can do with these kind of things. Now, if I was to take these flowers that I've made, all these flower petals, Often they're going to look prettier if you put two of them together. So I'll usually stack two or three of them and then I can fold them and fold it again. And I can make some, look at how pretty a bud that is, right? You can see how nice that is. And then I just need a way of attaching them. So we do have some pop-up stitches and I'm going to show you the pop-up stitches. But if you'd like it easier than this, then what you could do is get yourself some flower petals not not so much like this that have their very thin ones, but ones that are big wider um, petals, you know, that are more uh, fuller. And then instead of using the techniques with this organza type of ribbon, then you can use uh, the flower petals and that'll give you a really nice look too. And uh, Meredith actually did a video um, on the Husqvarna Viking page where she showed you how to use the um, flower petals for the pop-up stitches. So I'm going to show you what the pop-up stitches are. Um, the machines that are a little older, uh, there are some that have pop-up stitches. The Designer Diamond Royale has them. 
And uh, we have quite a few machines that have pop-up stitches. If you let me know what machine you have, I'll, I'll check it out and answer later on if I don't get to it on this one. But let me show you the pop-up stitches because I think they really are exquisite and they give you a whole different range of looks that you can get to your flowers. So I'm going to use some of the petals like this and I'm going to use some of these petals and I'm going to go over to select the stitches. And then I'm going to show you some more sewing techniques, okay? Now, the best thing to do is kind of do what I'm doing, is I just selected some fabric and decided that I was going to test out the stitches to see what they would look like. On my um, Designer Epic 2, I can find my pop-up stitches in my L menu. And if you have other machines like a Sapphire 85 or an Epic 95 Q, or there's a lot of machines that have these pop-up stitches, you can uh, you can go and usually you're going to find them in either the L menu or they're going to be in the where the decorative stitches are. Now, if I scroll up, the pop-up stitches that I like the most for this are usually um, 37 is really nice. 38 is really nice, and 36. So on my sample that I did, I did stitch number 36, and that's what you're seeing here. So it gives you that nice little vine, and then I can add some leaves to it afterwards. So I'm going to add a new line of stitching here, and I'll do the one that I selected. And the way that these stitches work is they have a stop to them that will allow me to add the petals. They're made that way. So to start with, I don't have green thread on. I've got my blue thread on. So I'm doing something more decorative. So let me change over and I will change my thread so that I get a little nicer look. And uh, while you're waiting, there was uh, somebody asked a question about how low do you go with your tension? I usually, when I'm doing the gathering of the ribbon, I'll usually go down to somewhere 3.8 or at the most 4.0 but you can go lower if you feel like you want the stitch to be looser and and the more the lower you go the looser the stitch will be the easier you can pull the ribbon and adjust it all right so here i'm going to oops get this back on track here so i just use my automatic needle threader and i'm ready to start my stitch now I'm going to use the start stop button because it will stop at when it's time to add the, the petals. And I can decide, do I want to start off the first petal because this is the top of the flower. It'll only take a second. All right. So there we are. Now, when you're doing the pop-up flowers and your machine stops, you're going to turn it at a right angle. Here's my petals. I'm going to put two of these petals together and I'm going to fold them in half and I'm going to fold them again in quarters. I want this to be a, a smaller petal that's at the top. It's almost going to look like a bud. So I'm going to put that point right next to where the needle is and then start the machine and it attaches the bud. And then I'm going to come back straight on and then keep sewing. And I don't have to sew in a straight line. You'll notice I'm turning the fabric because how many straight flowers do you know? The stems always have a little bit of a curve to them. So I like to get that same kind of effect. All right, time for another petal. So this time I'm going to put three of these little pieces that I have and I'm going to fold it in half and fold it in a quarter. So that's going to give me a bigger flower. All right. And where it's going to attach is right where that point is, that intersection. So I'm turning and I'm going to put my fabric down so that the that corner touches the needle and then I'm going to sew. And after it's done a tack up stitch, my 
machine stops when I'm doing pop-up stitches and yours will too. That's why it's a good idea to use the start stop button because it will stop when it's the right time to add the flower petals. Now all I'm missing are some leaves. I've got some really nice leaves. And uh, there's actually a huge selection of leaves that are in most of our machines. All right, I'll do my last one here. I've got three petals and these ones are all the same fabric. I'm gonna rotate, get my petals into place. And then I Put it back going straight again and keep going. Now, if you're feeling like you might need some help to do pop-up stitches, a lot of our Kusvarna Viking machines have videos that are available to show you how to use these pop-up stitches. And I'm gonna stop when I get to my end of my fabric. So what I'm really doing here is creating um, a, like a little garden, right? This is my practice sheet. Even though it looks kind of interesting and I think everything looks really pretty, this is the one that I just did. How beautiful is that? But I'm really just doing a practice. So um, we had a question about does the Diamond Royale have pop-up stitches? Well, you're lucky the Diamond Royale does have pop-up stitches. Isn't that exciting? So, and... Uh, when you look at this, like when I started, and I started playing around with this yesterday just to make some, uh, show you how I would start a project, is I don't know whether I'm gonna like a technique until I try it. And part of doing this is experimenting with what's working with what's not working. So how do you know if you're gonna like a technique if you don't give it a try? So to come up with the different techniques for my gathered ribbon, I tried four options, right? I tried one sewing down the center. I sewed one with that curved line, the you know, the curved stitch. And then I did one with this technique here where I sewed on one side and then just came in and did a V and then came back and kept going to it. And then I did another one, which was at a total right, you know, that 45 degree angle. It really isn't anything that's complicated and you might have better ideas than I do. It didn't, I didn't need to use any stabilizer. There's no stabilizer. This ribbon is actually a very, very stable thing to be sewing on. And remember, you're using a bigger stitch and you're using less tension when you're doing all of this, right? But can you not see how fun it is? Even though this is a sample, I wanna do something with these because these turned out really well. And I know what I want is I wanna put a bigger stem on it. I might put a stem like this. Or I might put some leaves. You'll notice the leaves we have here. These are some leaves. But I could also come in and add some other types of flowers that are in here, right? I could go into embroidery and start adding some embroidered flowers. So let's just switch over a little bit. Because everything that I've been showing you so far, these are all sewing techniques. You can do these with just about any machine that's out there. You don't need anything more than a straight stitch to be able to get that kind of look with it. But when you get into embroidery, that's when you can do some really more involved things, all right? Now, we have some beautiful designs that are embroidery designs called pop-up designs. And I'll just show you what they look like. This is my screen for the MySonet library. And a lot of our embroidery machines have these designs in them. So if I select this, this is a pop-up flowers, all right? This is one of my favorites, and this is where I got some of my leaves from. What I like about this is it will tell you, learn how to stitch the design. And then there's a PDF that shows you the designs, how the three-dimensional designs, and then it shows you how to use them. And so these are all petals and flowers and leaves that are meant to be used three-dimensionally that you can also use on their own. So this is a little bag that I made. And this is a design I've had for quite a while. But I adore the way these flowers look. Don't they look so nice? 
and they're all separate. And then they have some, there's other flowers here. And there was supposed to be three dimensional leaves at the time. But when I was making this, I thought, oh, it's too busy. I'll just do the flowers. And I was trying to rush and do something. But now I'm kind of sorry I didn't add the leaves to it. But as you're looking at that, what makes it so nice is instead of using like a cotton fabric, I used a fabric that was like a prom, a shiny prom dress fabric, like a satin. And it worked really well for the applique because as you're going around, the applique stabilizes the edge of it and then it'll cover it off with a decorative stitch. So some of the leaves that would come from this, look at some of these leaves here, aren't they pretty? So these were where I started the basis for my big design. Sorry, I dropped it down. This one right here. All I had was the background for my vase and my vase was stitch. And I didn't do anything for this. This was like a UFO that had been sitting in my closet for a couple of years. And then I suddenly had this idea about doing the three-dimensional flowers. But because it, it, I'd been collecting leaves and some flowers from projects and then I never used them. And I thought, well, that would be really fun to put on there. But really what inspired me was the ribbon embroidery attachment because it allowed me to get some of these really beautiful looks with the ribbon. And so I started, you always, when you're designing something like this, start from the background. You want to have your background fabric uh, covered where you think you're going to want your flowers to go. So the leaves were kind of obvious place to start. So I tacked the leaves with a sewing stitch, just match my thread color. And I literally just sewed down the center of the leaf. That's why the edges are still able to be picked up. If you know you're going to do something that is going to be a three-dimensional leaf or a flower, then when it comes to doing the back, you're going to be happier if you use the same colored bobbin. So that if, if people look behind or if that leaf turns over, that you're going to see that instead of the white bobbin thread, you're going to have the color of the leaf. It's going to give you that impression more that you're continuing on that three-dimensional look. That was one of the mistakes that I made when I did these flowers. I used a white bobbin thread. You can see the white bobbin thread back there. And it was actually very easy because you all know I have a, a nice collection of fabric markers. So all I really, if it bothered me that much, I could go in with my fabric markers and color it in. And that, that would be a simple, easy solution. I just haven't done it yet because I think it's important to see the effect that if it's a, you want it to look three-dimensional and look nice on both sides, having the same color thread in the top and in the bottom is a really important thing to do. Okay, so we're going to put that away. Now, when you look at the flowers that I have here, and this has kind of been traveling around with me getting kind of beat up, this leaf, the, the flower here and this flower here, those were done with sewing. They were just using the same type of ribbon, a very wide ribbon. And all I did was twirl them around and I started sewing it. I'll show you in a little bit, actually. Um, when you're sewing it, if, if you want to make a flower like this, you don't have to do it by hand. You can do it with your sewing machine. So I'll make sure to cover that before that we go. Now, up here in this top, that I have a felted flower that's underneath that. Let me see if I can give you a little close up. And then I decided it was just a little too plain. It needed a little bit more. So I felted in the uh, organza that I just used in those flowers and then put some, um, what's that called? I, I have this sparkly stuff. It'll come to me in a minute, the name of it, uh, in the center of it. So it gives it kind of the look of there being a, a center to the flower. So each one of these has kind of got a different technique. The one that you're seeing right here with this center, that's a felted ball. And I did the flower. And then I really wanted to get the feeling that that center of that daisy had a nice center to it. So you can buy these little felted balls. And all I did was cut it in half with uh, scissors. And then, no, it's not mylar, but good guess, Amy. Um, oh, goodness gracious. It's going to get me. I'll write down what that stuff is. It's, it's really very thin. It's like shredded mylar almost. And it's a heat set. It'll come to me what the name of it is. But it's a lot of fun to use like that for the center of the flowers. Angelina. Uh, yeah, Angelica fibers. That's it. So that's what the center here did. I put some Angelica fibers here. And I also put some down in the flower over here with this organza one there. But the felted ball. 
at first I was thinking that I might have to glue it, but I ended up, uh, I just sewed around the edge with my foot and it kind of pushed the ball down flat. And then all I did was I did a little zigzag around the edge of the felted ball because I didn't want to put a lot of glue on there and I didn't feel the glue was going to hold it that well. All right. So we have a question. Let's see. Would be great to attach flowers. Yes, that the Angelina fibers are, are just perfect for that. And um, I use them a lot of times. You can use them actually on, uh, if you put a piece of fabric down, they're, uh, they heat up. And so they'll actually make a fabric that you, when you pull it up after you ironed it, you do need a protection on the top of it. It will create a fiber that you can use to make all kinds of great flowers for. And I meant to pull it up and I, I forgot to pull them up. Um, but they really are very cool to work with. And I use those kind of fibers a lot. You can get them at your craft stores. A lot of quilt shows, sometimes you'll find that kind of stuff. All right. So let's look at some of the other three-dimensional flowers. Now, here's some other three-dimensional flowers that I did. I thought these would be really nice. They're done with that sheer organza that I used right here, but they actually didn't do anything for me. They kind of sit flat and they, they weren't really exciting. They're meant to be piled up like this one on top of the other, but I didn't end up using them because I just decided they, they just weren't doing it for me. Now, if there's a, another flower here that we have. It came up from one of those pop-up ones. And sometimes you may not like the look of it if it's by itself like this, but maybe you might like it better if you fold it up into quarters and because it gives it a whole different look by folding it. Here's a bigger one that was done the same way. They're meant to be kind of stacked together like this. So you have the look. And if you stack them together, one on top of the other, then that gives it a really nice look. But what happens if you take them and you fold them, sometimes you can get more of a natural looking flower and then you can press them or put a little bit of starch on them to keep them open the way you want them to be. Um, there was a question about the, uh, was it too bulky to go over? I, I really wasn't sure whether or not that felted a ball that it would be too bulky, but the needle wasn't going over the center of the ball. It was really just going over the edge and the presser of that foot held the, this down and it really did a great job. Now I was actually sewing with the designer Epic too, right? And that has superior piercing power. I'm not sure if it would be the same thing with um, maybe an opal. So I would test it out, but you've got nothing to lose by just putting your foot down, use your biggest flattest foot and putting the pressure down and you can turn it by the hand wheel and just see how the first couple of stitches go. And if you feel that it's not doing well and it's not piercing well, then don't do it that way. You can sew it by hand or you can glue it. And, you know, so many of these different techniques, the stems that were here first, if you're thinking about how this was all put together, I always am going to start with the background first, right? So you can see that this stem was stitched first right? Because it's behind all those flowers. So I usually will try and just envision where I might want some of those things to be. Over here, I have a little applique stem. And I might put some leaves on there. I think they probably need something. And so over the next, you know, few weeks, you'll probably see that this is going to change more and more. Out of everything that's here so far, the one thing I don't love is this purple flower because it's so big and the flower, the color is so dark that you really don't get any depth or dimension from it. So I did this little test today that uh, when I made the uh, flower that I have here and I tried just changing the ribbons and these are done with the ribbon embroidery attachment, all right? So here's all the different ribbons that I used. This one I used earlier, but out of all of these different widths, I stacked two ribbons together. So one of them, I stacked the purple ribbon and the organza. One of them, I stacked the lighter two colors together. And every time I put a different pair, this one I thought was going to be really pretty, but it, in the end, it didn't show up as well. And then the one that's right here, this sheer organza one, this one had wire with it. Now, if you want to use a ribbon that has wire with it, I wouldn't recommend it for the ribbon embroidery attachment, but if you go to either end of the side, you can easily pull that and the, the wire just comes right out. 
So if you find a ribbon you like that's got wire in it, you can still use it. All right. So don't, you know, don't think, oh, that's got wire in it. It's not going to work. This one is about five eighths of an inch. And that's about the maximum size you can get when you're using the ribbon embroidery attachment is five eighths of an inch. Let's see. We have another question on the flower piece. Did you do the machine quilting first? And that, oh, that's a great question. I'm glad you noticed that. That is a cool question. So whenever I'm working on something, believe it or not, I did not put any more thought into the main piece as I did to this one. It kind of started at the same thing where I just was kind of putting things around. And then it got to the point where I started thinking, well, I'm going to have a problem here because if I keep finishing doing all my flowers, then I'm not going to be able to get into the backgrounds to quilt the background. And at that point, I realized that I still could put some of these flowers and leaves and pull them aside. So what I did was I brought in a design from the MySonet library that's a continuous embroidery design. And I, I thought it was a little bit traditional looking, but I, I thought it might look kind of like wallpaper. I'm not sure if it gives the effect that I was going for. But what I was doing was letting the design do it. So I hooped it and I did an embroidery and then I just kept going. Now, if I knew that I couldn't get below this part, I could either cut the design or I just stopped it so it didn't embroider the onto my flower. I actually kept the design bigger so that I could go longer where I wanted to and stop where I wanted to. But it really was something that I did. It probably took me about an hour to quilt the background, even though I was fussy stitching around all the flowers. And then the bottom, I just did straight stitch. I, I tried not to make my lines too straight I wanted it to be um, look a little bit more natural. Now, when I look at the back, all right, you'll notice there's a big area in the middle where the vase is and where the flowers are that aren't quilted yet, but I'll take care of that. Once we've got all the flowers done, I'll go and add some stitches. I'll be able to go in and add some stitches and kind of quilt it down. And I'm gonna come up with an interesting pattern for the vase also. One, um, we have a question about does the ribbon embroidery attachment work for the original epic yes it does the the ribbon embroidery attachment is one of my favorite things in the world all right and you can lift it up and pull it up and when you're putting your ribbon on here sometimes you can put up to 20 yards it depends if your ribbon is a sheer organza or if it's satin ribbon and what the width of it is but the width of it would your ribbon has to fit in between these two lines right here so the original epic has had an update that will allow you to use the ribbon embroidery a uh, ribbon embroidery attachment and it also has um it works on the ruby 90 and on, on the epic 2 any of the machines that have the larger formatted body then it will work with and then we also do have uh what's called the creative embellish or it's an embellishment accessory a designer embellishment accessory and that's not out yet that'll be coming out later and that'll also give you the ability to use um not only ribbon but yarns and beads so there's lots of possibilities coming as far as what you can do with that so when i was making the ribbon for this so it really was a matter of look at the difference okay now sometimes people think things take a long time i started this at 12 o'clock and at 12 30 i'd done four flowers one of them is i've got pinned up over here all right and that's the first one I did. Uh, and then I did this one here that had a different flower, different, uh, that's the back of it. And then I've got these other two, the lighter one. I think the lighter one really shows a lot of dimension to it. And you notice that I put it on the back of this organza so that if I want to, all I have to do is cut the organza right away from the edge and then I can apply it without anybody knowing, like you'll look here, the organza's on the back of it, it's still staying there. If I really needed to, I could trim the edges by putting it on my little flame and burning the edge, but I didn't have to do that with this. And so now I have a three-dimensional flower that I could decide I'm gonna put on top of it and look at how much prettier that is, right? And I could decide maybe this is not the one that's gonna go there and I don't necessarily have to sew the whole thing. All I have to do is sew the center and the center of it will attach it. Will you mention the machine that can use the R, the ribbon embroidery attachment? So 
I think I, um, so if there's any confusion about what machines can use the ribbon embroidery attachment, uh, because we have that question again, is that it can be used by the designer Epic 1, the designer Epic 2, and the Ruby 90. And the qualifications for you to be able to use that is you need to have this larger area, right? So when you're looking at the ribbon embroidery attachment, you can see the size of it. You need to have one of the machines that have that large area that has 12 inches and the height of it being the five and a half inches for this to go and sit into place. And if there's any more questions I haven't answered, you all know I'm going to come back later on and um, tell you about uh, and answer any questions, right? So don't worry about that. So if you're really not sure how you want to use these, doing these on something like an organza is really pretty cool because afterwards I could decide before, let me just trim one of these away. All right, almost done here. I can think about how they would look together. Do I want to put one on top of each other? Maybe I want to put them back to back. So now I really truly have a seriously three-dimensional flower because all I have to do is put a stitch in the center. Now I might also put something like a Swarovski crystal in the center, right? I can use a hot, hot fix and put the Swarovski, but you can see I did not cut the organza. You're seeing the shadow of the organza here, where in this case, you don't see the organza at all. So all I would do is cut a little bit closer and then by putting the two of them together, then I have a, a flower that really does look three-dimensional to it, front and back, and will stay together. All I have to really do is put a stitch in the middle to hold them together. So the more you start playing with these techniques, the more you start thinking about how can I make three-dimensional flowers? It's not about that there's one way. There's thousands of different ways. And the more you start playing, the more you'll get that happening. Now, this was a leaf, a big leaf, and this is one of the ones I made out of velvet. And it wasn't an applique shape. All I did was I embroidered the leaf and then I stitched around the outside edge and I had another piece of velvet right side against it. And then I cut the back, you see, I turned it around. I cut the back out, flipped it right side together. And so the edges are finished. You don't get any of that raw edge of the velvet showing up. And then this is another leaf that was raw edge and it's still there's enough stitching on it that will live it, give it kind of a really kind of cool look to it. So. As you start playing around and looking for it, I think the secret, what you've got to do though, as you start playing is, if you do embroidery, start playing around with what a three-dimensional flower looks like and just stitch some of them out because you really don't know until you stitch them out how you're going to want to use them. And there was a question about the ribbon embroidery attachment flowers. Do you use wash away stabilizer under the organza? Thanks for mentioning that, Sue. I, um, I did actually use an uh, aqua magic underneath it and then after i did the the embroidery it took me you know i think about 25 minutes and then i just went and washed them and for the fun of it i took this with the aqua with the aqua magic was washed out and i threw it in the dryer so it would be dry in time to show you and the drying kind of shrunk it up a little bit but it kind of gives it a really neat look to it in that it gives it a little bit of a curved look and you can almost feel like you're getting more of a, a three-dimensional look to that. Now, according to some of the ribbon you would use, you know, you might have to be careful. If you're using an organza ribbon and you don't want it to shrink, then I may not, you know, I may not choose to put that in the, in the um, dryer. But, all right. So we have a question about the daisy made with a felted ball. Well, that actually is super easy because the daisy was a ribbon design made with the ribbon embroidery attachment. And what you see is what you get. So let, I'm going to go into the um, library and show you some of the designs because I think it'll make it easier for you to see. Let me go back here. All right. I'm going to go back. If I was to type in ribbon embroidery flowers, okay, ribbon attachment, ribbon em attachment, and then flowers, you'll see some of the shapes and you're going to recognize some of them as we start looking at them. Okay, let me see. So here's a, this is like a rose type shape. And then you've got a 
kind of a daisy shape here, but that's not the one I used. The one I used had a little more point to it. And here, this one here has got a lot of pointy shapes to it. And you're really, it's going to depend upon what ribbon you use, what it's going to look like. So to start with, this is all I did was I just searched to see what kind of flowers we had in here. And you'll see it's bringing me a lot of other ribbon designs. This one here actually could be kind of fascinating to see how that would stitch out. This is a beautiful, this flower looks like poinsettia. And if you used an applique fabric underneath it, that is absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous poinsettia. And look at this flower here. It kind of looks like a point, a purple cone flower, right? So every flower that you would look at is going to give you a different idea. This one has got a stem to it and it's got the center of the flower. The last part of the design will be the ribbon embroidery attachment, but you will see the flowers and the leaves as you go. So I could go on and on. You'll find that there are, oh, there, look at that. That was the daisy that I did, okay? So all I did was I selected it. And then because I have a subscription and a Wi-Fi enabled machine, I can select it. I can send it to my computer or I can send it to my machine that I have on. And I have, uh, I'm lucky to have three machines here that are Wi-Fi enabled. So I could send it to any one of those. And then I can go and open them up and see what it looks like. Let's see in my software what it looks like. So there's the ribbon, right? Now I could design and copy this and put a few of them together and move them and figure out what I want it to look like. And then I could make a whole daisy bouquet. See how you can go and move them around like that. And I could just add more and more of them. Let me touch another paste. So even imagine how dramatic it can look to instead of thinking about planting a whole different smorgasbord of flowers, just choosing, you know, one flower like that and making different color daisies using different ribbons and things like that. And you can choose not to do the felted ball, obviously, and the center of the ribbon will be there. Or maybe you put some Swarovski crystals or a button. Imagine how beautiful they would be with a button instead. And I actually meant to do that with one of them. I was going to add a button to this one, and then I ended up covering it up. So this one here is a different shape flower. And can you see how it looks exactly like the daisy? Well, that flower's in there too. So now the other ones, these ones over here that had this um, uh, design to it, the purple cone flower, that was not a design that had ribbon to it. So what I did was I made it myself. And it's just so easy. I've only got a couple of seconds left, but I'll show you how I did that. All right, so I'm going to go to this. This was the design that I was using, all right? And I really didn't like the petals. I didn't think they looked nice. And I thought, well, that would be kind of cool to add some ribbon embroidery to it. So I went into my, my Sonet Platinum, and I went to the Embellish tab, and I told it that I wanted to use ribbon. And I'm going to have the drawing one. I'm going to do freehand draw. And I chose the color, which was uh, that pink. And I'm going to make the ribbon smaller. And now you'll see I've got a little pen attached here. So all I have to do is draw where I want the petals to be. All right. Everywhere I draw is going to be a petal. Now I can choose whether I want to do the embroidery underneath it. And then I can add my ribbon afterwards when I let it go. Look at it. Isn't that amazing? That is how fast I was able to add ribbon to that. And if I didn't like something, then I can go up and I can go to edit and it will let me edit the points and I can move them. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see how cool this is. All right. So if I did something and I didn't like where I put the ribbon, I could just pick it and move it and change where I've got them. I can take the whole design and move the whole design. And every time I want to, I can touch something and change the placement of the ribbon. So I could really, you know, the more I know about um, flowers and the more that I can decide, you know, that I want to build something, it's very easy to build your own ribbon embroidery designs. So you don't need to have something. You can just go in and make your own designs and it's really quick and easy to do. So, and uh, there's a question, what is the background design that you use for the flowers? Well, they were all, they really were all separate designs. Now, where I placed the flowers and where I put a daisy, that was just all personal choice. 
But I encourage all of you to go and just choose one type of flower and start playing around with how you can put them together. Make yourself a little sample. Everybody's got a little bit of fabric. In this case, I have a, a fused on uh, stabilizer to the back of it so I didn't have to have the paper floating around. And just kind of build some flowers and have fun with it. If you love the daisies, add some daisies to it and then play around with some of the stems and the embroidery designs if you have an embroidery machine. And if you don't have an embroidery machine, nothing that's on this has been done with embroidery. Every single thing has been done with sewing. So it is a perfect kind of craft for somebody who wants to get excited about playing with three-dimensional flowers. And really all you need for most of this is a straight stitch. And so it's not hard to do. So I hope everybody gives it a try. Thank you for joining me today. And uh, I hope you're excited to like think about all the different ways that you can create something new. So please have fun and enjoy your machine. And I will go and answer any questions. So if there's something that um, didn't get answered here today, I'll make sure to come back and answer your questions. So make sure after you've watched the video to come back and uh, I I'll keep an eye on the questions if there's anybody that has anything else. So thank you for joining me today. It's been wonderful. I loved having you here.